What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Season Change. I'm Matt Mills. I hope everyone is having a good day. Whenever you're hearing this, whatever time of day that you're hearing this, I hope that you are having a good day. Uh, thank you for you, you listening support, and thank you for the comments and the followings on the various platforms. I appreciate all of it, and all I ask that you continue to listen, and if you enjoy what you listen to, please share it with someone else that hopefully it can be a blessing to them also. Uh, we're going to get into a few things that's on my mind, and then we're going to wrap it up at the end with the word for the day. But I couldn't let this go by without speaking on the school uh, shooting that occurred at the elementary school in Texas in which 19 children were killed and two adults. Um, we do want to send prayers to those families, to everyone involved, um, not even just the families of those that passed away, but even the children that were in that school because... Those are moments and memories that I'm sure is going to stick with them for a while and it's going to be a trauma that they'll have to face and deal with. So I think that we all should take time to say a prayer for everyone that had to experience it. Um, I also read that um, at some point the 18-year-old who committed the shooting also killed his grandmother, I believe, um, sometime that day. So just... That family, just just keep that in prayer for all the lives that were lost. And I think even on a larger scale, thinking about the the fear that's out there that you know parents have with you now taking their children to school, and to think about even to the extent my wife works at a school, it's something I didn't think about. It's so many layers to it. The staff is there, the children that are there, and the parents that are concerned. Um, even thinking about a video I saw on the news maybe a week ago where kids were playing in broad daylight and they were running out of fear for hearing gunshots or seeing children getting killed right outside of the school. Um, the, our children are under attack and, it, and it's definitely a time where they, they don't have the opportunity to enjoy their innocence due to the safety issues. And... It's, it's a shame what's happening, and I just want to say that we just have to find time to, I mean, try our best and feel motivated to continue to pour into our children in the sense of continue to being proactive and trying to ensure a safe environment as much as possible for our children. Continue to make the most of every opportunities and moments that we have with our loved ones, too, that that we allow them to feel loved, that they feel comfortable, that we enable them to grow and encourage, you know, relationship and love between them. Um, just to continue to allow them as much as possible to empower them and to keep them safe. As hard as that might be with what's going on, we have to keep trying, we have to keep pushing, we have to keep making the conscious effort. To create a safe environment and a loving environment for them to grow in. As scary as that is right now, we have to keep trying and we have to keep making a commitment to constantly doing that. Because at the end of the day, with them feeling unsafe, they're looking at us and depending on us for the love and the security and the support. So I, just, I think it's something that we have to just continue to pour into them and continue to pray. If they're being under attack and their safety is strongly in question uh, more and more each day. Um, so that was something that was on my heart. Once again, I do say prayers for the lives that were lost. Um, on a brighter note, I do want to take time to acknowledge my wife. Uh, Miss Whitney, we celebrated our first anniversary on Sunday, and it was it was a very peaceful and enjoyable day. Um, I do want to acknowledge the support of just friends and family who remembered and shared, and I appreciate just the love that was felt, and it was very genuine. It was just a blessing to experience, and just being able to enjoy the day and enjoy time. And enjoy the blessing it is to have time with our loved ones. Um, we did end up um, 
saving the cake, which we both forgot about how we're supposed to eat the cake a year later, which is not something we remember. But we got to the point that neither one of us actually wanted cake, <laughs> which is very interesting. You're trying to iron our tradition, but neither one of us got a sweet tooth. So we decided to eat a small part. And the problem is now neither one of us want the cake. So I hope it doesn't get thrown away. <laughs> but if anybody wants them, they're welcome to take it because I'm pretty sure nobody's going to eat it. But regardless, it was a blessing to see the first year and see the life that we were able to build and to share and to know that there are many more years uh, going forward. Um, I also want to take time to take a brief note to shout out uh, Elder Michelle Mills and a cheap plug for her spiritual breakfast. It's a phone line that she does every Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock um, for women, but men also tune in. And it's just a forum and a, and a fellowship. People can share their testimonies, their concerns, things on their mind, and they support each other. Um, and oftentimes there is a speaker or a preacher, but it's really a, a great form that people feel comfortable and they feel like they have a support system. So if anyone listening is interested in checking it out, it is on the phone line and I will have the number listed in this video. The number is 1774-220-4000 and the ID number is 27875. Six four. Once again, that's one seven seven four two two zero four thousand. ID number two seven eight seven five six four. And also want to point out if you have any prayer requests or any concerns, any thoughts, anything you want read or discussed or a testimony, you're welcome to email me at ministermattmills at gmail dot com, which is M I N M A T T M I L L S. And whatever that thing you might want shared, or if you just want it shared with me personally, either or, just let me know when you send the email. And before, as we're getting into the, the word or the thought of the day, um, as a person that deals with and struggles with anxiety, the scripture uh, blessed me and brought something else to, to something I have to keep in mind. As I try to go through my daily routine. And it's Psalms chapter 46 verse 10. And part of it. And it starts with be still. And know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. And I think the thing that stuck with me. When I read it recently. Is to be still. Um, my anxiety. Keeps me running rampant. And I think it keeps me over planning for every, every, every situation, every result. How can I counteract the result to this? Um, I think that it keeps you in your head. It keeps you always thinking. It keeps you always worrying. And it always keeps you thinking about what you could have done differently. You know, when you make a mistake, it's, it's you trying to figure out how could I fix this? How could I have known better and it doesn't give room for God to be who God is if you read earlier in the psalm it, spe it specifies that God is our refuge and our strength and always ready to help us in times of trouble so we will not fear and most people know by anxiety it's it's an extension of fear the uncertainty creates an uneasiness which causes us to be afraid and I know for me, it is very hard for me to let go of control to say that I won't overthink or be fearful of the future, which the truth is it limits God in whatever plan he has. So being still, it's the simple things. It's, it's not always the big things. It's the simple you trying to figure out what your next move is career wise or trying to figure out what you need to do next. Uh, around the house or financially or it's not your job to figure out the next plan for you or someone else sometimes you do have to be still and I know there's many people and you can say that people trust you and confide in you with their problems 
it's not your job all the time to fix everything. And I think when you task good people with responsibility, many times they take on tasks that aren't meant to be handled by them. Being that type of person and like to fix everything because I thought it was the right thing to do for the people I love, sometimes it's not meant for me to fix the problem. It's simply for me to be a supporter. It is not our job to fix everything because we're not perfect. We are not God to fix everything. It's for us to be obedient and to be accepting of whatever is meant for us to do. It's for us to live in the present and live and give every day to what we are meant to do. Because sometimes we can think so far ahead that we forget or don't dedicate enough energy to the things that we're supposed to be doing in the present. Whether that's being a husband or a wife or a parent or an employee or a church member or a servant, we can get so caught up in our future planning that we lose sight on the present and enjoying our present. And taking or embracing the purpose of what the present presents. There are some things that people need of us. And because we sometimes we get so anxious and concerned about the future, we lose sight on that. So being that type of person, I think about being still. Just silencing all the thoughts in your head and all the, the worrying and the complaining that might be going on. And being still. And I think the second part of it is knowing that he's God. Knowing that the promises that God has given to us. Knowing the power that God has. Knowing that the plan he already predestined for us has not changed. The thing that can change is we can get, our, we can get in God's way in reference to his plan. Because of the fact that we like to be in control and we overthink and we have to do our best to reel in because of all that we hear, all the responsibilities that we have, all the concerns and the fears that we embrace, sometimes we have to be still. We have to take a break from all of that and allow God to do what God does. So it's a lesson I had to learn and embrace for myself. That sometimes I have to be still and get out of my own head and stop being worried or fearful of the things that I don't have any control over, but God does. And he's ready to help me in my time of trouble. So I'm, I'm afraid of these things in the future and anxious because I don't see how I'm going to get there. But it's not my job to see how I'm going to get there. Or is it my job to get there? God has already designated a plan for me to get to where I'm supposed to be and to become the person who I'm meant to be. But if I be still long enough to listen, then maybe I will hear from God. So that is what I wanted to share with you. Learn how to take time in your day. To be still. I notice we live in a lot of fast paced environments. And we have a lot of things to do. And a lot of expectations. But sometimes take a second to be still. Clear your mind. And be still. Be in whatever moment that is for you. Whether take the time to read. To listen to music. Spend time with your family. Or is it just sitting quiet. Whatever being still is for you, take the moment to be still. And then ask God what he has for you. So dear Lord, we thank you for this time. It may have been brief, but I ask that something was said in in the story that was shared in the experience of being transparent will bless someone else. And then they will have the initiative to share. Uh, Please bless the world that we're in with the tragedies that are occurring and the uncertainty that is happening. Give us guidance on how to address the the needs of the people. Give us the words to speak and and the actions to do that we can change the world that we are currently living in. 
I ask you to continue to bless those families, continue to bless them with some type of peace and comfort during this time, and just continue to support them and be present for them, that they may feel your love during this tragedy. I ask you to continue to bless us and keep us and teach us how to be patient and to be still in such a fast-paced world that we live in, and allow us to continue to look for you as we continue to grow as we live every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for listening. If you are interested and you did enjoy this, please like, please subscribe to the channel as we continue to post and continue to share and continue to work on endeavors to step outside of uh, my comfort zone and to, to share just aspects of my life that I enjoy and hope that it blesses you. So please don't be afraid to comment. Please subscribe, and I appreciate you listening. I hope that you enjoy the long uh, weekend. Enjoy your cookouts, because I know we're cooking out. Just make sure you enjoy the relaxation, and enjoy the rest of your day.